Good day to the viewers and listeners. I am Stacey Carmichael and this is the Progress Report. Today we are joined by Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Honorable Hugh Todd. Minister, it's a pleasure having you in the program today. And I'm happy to be here, Stacey. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Now, Minister, since um, the PPC administration took office in August, what was the priority focus of your ministry? Well, I think the people of Ghana um, understood where we were in terms of, of our position in the regional and global environment, um, having had to fight very hard as a people um, to maintain our democracy. Um, and the people of Ghana recognized that we live in a rule-based um, global environment. So we, and we weren't playing by the, the international rules, we weren't playing by our own um, national laws. And we took a, a sharp dive in terms of our, our image, um, not only locally but uh, internationally. Um, so our first priority was to re-engage, um, having won the confidence of um, our international partners and friends. We were, to, we were able to seamlessly re-engage um, and to get um, our country back um, in the in the in the in the grouping of, of countries that, that behave um, in a predictable manner. And that was our first um, engagement. So you would have found that we had many courtesy calls um, from different foreign missions, international organizations, um, and that was part and parcel of that re-engagement um, because they recognized that the people of Ghana um, understand that we, we have to behave a certain way. Um, to, to win friends and partners. And because of all we've gone through, falling in no confidence um, vote in December um, 2018, and all of the events that followed that, and with also a very trying election period, um, the people of Ghana were able to convince our international friends and partners that we were serious about um, our engagement in the global environment. And uh, Foreign Ministry is that ministry that is responsible um, for that initial um, engagement. So we were able to, to do that in a very seamless manner and that led to all of the other engagements that we will talk about. Mm -hmm. Great Minister, thank you. Um, G77, could you speak a little bit about that? Okay, yes. Uh, it was a wonderful experience for Guyana. Uh, Guyana held the chairmanship and we still have it. We're going to, uh, we're going to give the chair to, to Guinea. Um, that's the new, the new chairmanship. Uh, but for us, we have had a very good, I would say, um, second half um, of the G77 chairmanship. Um, as you know, we, we were hit with our political crisis and then that with the global pandemic, so it affected a lot of what we could have done um, in terms of meeting in person. A lot of what we did had to be done virtually. Uh, but we've lost a lot of momentum due to our political situation here in Guyana. So when we resumed, um, uh, I should say resumed, when we, when we came into office, um, the president was very proactive in ensuring that he provided the leadership that was necessary. Um, for us to actually um, leave a lasting impression. I think we have achieved that. Um, so with the President's guidance, we were able to uh, craft a, a theme that was very consistent with um, the, the global um, narrative in terms of low carbon, um, uh, low carbon initiatives, and, and, and that fed into the Sustainable Development Goals 2030 and the indicators. Uh, so we looked at that as part of our theme um, and that was what we had advanced. And we held a, a flagship event. And we had, I think, close to 200 participants from all over the world. And we were able to, to really showcase Guyana for what it's worth. And I think that from the feedback that we got um, from international friends and partners, I, I think it was very impressive. Um, most of uh, the persons who looked at it uh, would have seen um, how Guyana was, was showcased. Um, and I think one of the highlights of that also was the fact that the Vice President 
um, Dr. Barajag, he was able to make a very riveting presentation in terms of uh, climate financing and, uh, and climate ambition. And I think it was well received and it showed that Guyana is still um, able to punch above its weight as a, as, a small, as a small country. So we were able to regain a lot of what we would have lost in terms of our global um, image and standing. And we were able to achieve that um, when we took office in, 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 in August. Um, I also want to commend um, former, former foreign minister, who is now our uh, permanent representative at the United Nations, uh, Ms. Carolyn Rodriguez Burkett, for her leadership too, because uh, she played a very vital role in organizing things there in, at the UN headquarters um, to make that event very successful. I also want to commend our team here in Guyana, which is our headquarters, uh, for their commitment and, and, their, and their passion. Um, and we saw it in terms of our output. And I think that, um, I think that we have um, achieved a lot. Um, so when Guinea takes the chair, um, they, they can provide continuity um, to what we've been able to achieve for the people of Ghana. So I think uh, the people of Ghana should be proud because it's part and parcel of their involvement as well. Um, we, we represent them and I think that they are proud that we've done, done good by them in terms of representation at that level. And I think that we, we have um, bigger things to do at the multilateral level. There are some initiatives that we uh, plan to, to pursue. And I think that we will be able to advise the Guyanese uh, people as, as we progress. Thank you very much, Minister. Now, um, the International Court of Justice recently ruled that it has jurisdiction to hear the Guyana versus Venezuela border case. Um, could you tell us the importance of that, um, that ruling? Well, it's, 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 um, it's very good for Guyana. I think post-independence we've been grappling with um, sovereignty and territorial matters, and I think it has plagued us. Um, but it has not prevented us from, um, from achieving um, prosperity for the people of Guyana. Uh, but it is, it is a defining moment in our, in our history. Um, and it's something that we want to, to put behind us. We've always um, stood firm by the, the 1899 uh, Arbitral Award um, as complete and final. And we see Venezuela as agitator in this, in this matter. And we, we recognize that uh, we have international friends and partners that, that support us. And we've committed to a, a multilateral approach in dealing with this. And uh, that is why we are, we are happy that the United Nations, um, through its Secretary General, would have advocated for us to uh, for both parties to have this matter resolved. So what the court essentially did for the people of Guyana um, is to let the people of Guyana know that they have jurisdiction over, over the, the matter um, in terms of settling our, our um, land boundary dispute. So like any local court, what, what the international court is saying is that um, they can hear the matter. Um, and they can preside over it, and they can determine the finality of, well, I shouldn't say that. I should say they can determine, um, they can determine the outcome based on our presentation of our facts versus uh, Venezuela's presentation of their facts. But the uh, people of Ghana must understand as well that Venezuela is not participating. Um, and even though they're not participating, um, it doesn't prevent the, the matter from being adjudicated upon. So we are thankful that, that we've, we've had that achievement and we're looking forward to a very fruitful and well-represented um, position from, from the Guyana side. I think we're, we're very comfortable as a people uh, for all that we've achieved so far. And I think the people of Ghana are very optimistic um, for an outcome that would see the next generation not having to go through this because it's, it requires a lot of cost. Um, it can affect investment. 
and we don't want the next generation to have to be spending taxpayers' money to go through this. I think it's 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 a necessary expense, but it's it's it is not what we want to be spending money on. Not something that we believe that has been already final. And I'm hopeful that the kids today would not have to to deal with that. I've been a kid when this. Uh, uh, well, not a kid. I wasn't born yet, <laughs> post independence, 1966. But a decade or so after, um, and I've seen and heard of, of people like uh, Sir Shreed at Ramphal and, and those other guys, uh, Rashley Jackson, and, and stalwarts like those dealing with this matter. And here I am today, having to go through the same thing. And this is not something that um, that we want. And I'm certainly, I can tell you. And the president does not want the next generation to, to be going through this. And that is why he's very focused and he's very passionate about um, ensuring that the people of Canada get the best representation possible. Um, and we have a very good team, legal team. We have a very good committee here in Ghana that is very inclusive. Uh, most of Ghana know that, that um, former foreign minister Carl Greenwich is um, the agent on, on that team. And that is part of our inclusive arrangement. And if the people of Ghana uh, would have heard the president when he spoke after the judgment on the jurisdiction, um, he made mention of the inclusivity of this um, of, of, of this uh, matter and the fact that it involves each and every Guyanese citizen. Um, and we're taking a national approach to this. And I think um, everyone is on board, uh, which also includes the the opposition. Um, this is not a matter that we can really fight for. This is a matter that we have to put each and every one, um, or include each and every one. And that is what we've been doing because it is important for Guyana to be able to move forward and to be able to, to bring finality to our territorial, um, in, uh, this territorial matter uh, because sovereignty is important. Um, it helps with peace and stability, not only for Guyana but for the entire region. They, the Latin America, or I should say the continent, is, is rife with territorial issues. Um, but a lot of it um, you don't hear about because um, a lot of the countries are working hard on, on unity and cooperation and bringing economic benefits for, for their people. And that is what we're trying to do here in this matter. So it's not a case whereby there's any tension with the people of Venezuela. Um, this is a situation where we have to represent our people because this is how we, countries operate within the international system. It's about self-interest and then there's also cooperation. Um, and we are willing to cooperate with Venezuela going forward. Um, a Venezuela that is stable, a Venezuela that, um, that meets the requirements of the international law and best practice. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, Minister. Now, a few months back, um, His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali and a team, which included yourself, uh, visited Suriname. Could you tell the people the significance of that um, visit? Oh, it's it's, uh, it's very significant. It was um, it was a very good um, it's a very good um, I should say a very good achievement. Uh, for the people of Ghana and the people of Suriname. And it shows that the leadership on either side, um, President Ali and, and President Santoki, they understand um, the value of friendship and, and, and the importance of partnership. Uh, we share um, similar um, challenges due to our smallness. And uh, there are opportunities out there that we both can take up advantage of um, if we if we if we unite and that agreement that strategic cooperation dialogue platform I always I always have to take my time and go through that I think I got it right um, was an achievement for the people of Ghana and the people of Suriname because what it is what it has done is to is to provide a, an umbrella framework where we can advance our interests, mutual interests, for, for both Ghana and, and Suriname. And I want the people of the Ghana to understand that what we're doing is, is to improve their lives and livelihood. Um, and both presidents understand that. Um, we're both members of, of CARICOM, 
Uh, we're both members of, of ProSOAR. Um, and we are thinking broader. And the president made it clear um, that the, the unity between Ghana and Suriname is not limited to the two countries from on a bilateral uh, or from, from a bilateral perspective. We he's thinking regionally. Um, he wants to put Ghana and Suriname on the regional platform uh, from an energy perspective um, and connecting the Guyana shield. So we have French Guyana, we have Suriname, Guyana and Brazil. So that connectivity opens up a huge economic space for Guyana, both Guyana and, and Suriname, which is very important um, for, for progress and for future prospects. And, and Brazil is looking on too because northern Brazil is landlocked. They're looking for access to the Atlantic so that they can have um, access to markets. And it's, it's a very good time um, to, be, to be part of this process. And, and I think the people of Ghana um, recognize that they're getting good leadership and good representation um, from the Irfan Ali administration. And, and that is something that, that we're all proud of. And we can see um, the value of, of having the kind of leadership that we have here in Ghana and also in, in Suriname. And it, 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 open up, it opens up new vistas for, 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 for dialogue and cooperation. The, one of the major initiatives would be the, the bridging of the Quarantine River. And that is also part of the strategic cooperation agreement. Um, and with that, you know that the possibilities are endless because you need infrastructure um, or infrastructural network um, to, to move an economy. And it's all part of our, our advancement, advancement as, 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 um, as partners. So it's important. There are many other areas that um, would also improve the lives on either side. Education, we're dealing with energy, and transport, um, trade. So we're looking at all of the initiatives that are mutually beneficial to Ghana and Suriname. So security is also in that. Um, it's broad enough to cater for every sector and for all of the initiatives um, that would allow Guyana and Suriname to benefit from the opportunities um, bilaterally and regionally. Uh, because we're still also focused on combining our, our resources um, to be able to better take advantage of opportunities here on the continent as well as in as in CARICOM and in, in, in organizations like CELAC, OAS. So it's 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 going to do good for Guyana and as I, I always like to say, um, it is for the future of Guyana and and Suriname. And it's it's important that people understand that the, the kind of leadership that they're getting is, is very is very valuable and it, it speaks to what uh, the kind of representation that the people of Ghana needed. And I think that they, they made it clear at the, at the polls, and I think they're getting value for their vote. Thank you, Minister. Now, as we begin to reach wrap up time, um, you have had several engagements with your foreign counterparts. Um, could you tell the people how important these um, interactions are to the advancement of the country? I think, I think first and foremost, the people of Ghana can see clearly how we're positioned within the hemisphere, um, within Latin America and the Caribbean, and, and also within in North America. So we're looking at the entire Americas. When you look at the engagements that we've had, we've had a visit of, of, um, for, uh, of the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Uh, we've had our foreign minister from, um, from Brazil. Um, we've also had uh, visits from um, our other partners um, from around the world, um, all leading to economic cooperation, technical assistance, and these are mutually beneficial to both countries. But important um, for us is the fact that this is our hemisphere. Um, a lot of of our future prospects reside here in Latin America and the Caribbean and with our uh, partnership with, with the United States and Canada. 
and that is very, very important for, for, for Guyana. And we have been able to reposition ourselves as a people, and, and the people of Guyana did that through, um, through, through the polls, which has given the People's Progressive Party Civic the opportunity to lead government. And I think that that recognition um, is for the people of Guyana, everyone, regardless of who you would have voted for. And that has that is being exhibited in how we're performing. So our our business opportunities with the United States would in, would, in, would improve and deepen um, from a security perspective as well, from a social perspective, perspective in terms of health and education, and that is that is consistent with all of our partners within the region: Canada, Brazil. Um, with our, part, with, our, with our Caracan brothers and sisters. Um, we've also been able to have uninterrupted trade, and this is moving on a bit because I know we're out of time, um, with the, um, the United Kingdom. Um, um, and you know, the United Kingdom has left the EU, coined Brexit. Um, so we have an agreement with the UK that would see trade be uninterrupted so in terms of our taxes and, and concessions and, and so on would not be affected so our private sector um, our business interests would not would not be into would not be affected um, so it would be a somewhat a seamless transition um, now for 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 Guyana doing business with the United Kingdom um, I know we're out of time I don't want to press too much but I think I think in total, or in sum, I think the, the people of, of, of Guyana have received a credible representation from the foreign ministry, and, and the, that credit goes to each and every one within the, within the foreign ministry, um, down to the person who's actually um, preparing the, the, the restrooms and, and, and the, the guys who are actually bringing the meals, each and every one. Um, has to get credit from from our performance between all of us um, to date um, because it's it's a ministry that that involves everyone and i i can say that i've i've gotten very good support uh, we have a very talented and very professional team and we're working towards advancing all of the um, foreign policy um, initiatives um, being advanced by by his excellency um, Dr. Irfan, uh, President Dr. Irfan Ali. And I think we've done a fairly good job for the people of Guyana. And in 2021, we're going to, to, to increase our momentum. Um, we, we know we've had a very difficult period, um, but we're looking forward to a post-COVID environment. Um, I must also say to our, the people of Guyana, we've, we've gotten a lot of support from our traditional partners, United States, Canada, and, and, and our partners uh, across the world um, in, in terms of support for, for COVID. Um, and support is coming as far as the Middle East. Um, there's, there's, um, there's support coming from, from Qatar for Guyana. So we, what we've been able to do in, in four months is to really extend our reach um, far beyond this hemisphere. Um, our, our engagement will deepen in every region, in the Middle East, in Asia. We'll strengthen what we have here in Latin America and the Caribbean. And we're always looking for new opportunities. Um, Ghana is very visible right now internationally because of our, of our oil fine and, and the fact that we've moved into oil. And, be, and because of oil, there are many other ac economic activities that would, um, that would come to bear. And we have to be able to, to meet and rise to the occasion. And that is why we've involved in a big way the diaspora. We've had two engagements of recent with the UK and with Canada. And we're working on, or we've already um, done a lot of work in terms of our strategic um, plan. Um, because the president has already made a commitment to the diaspora, um, having um, having mentioned that also in, 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 the, in the manifesto, there's a lot of talent outside of Ghana and there are people who want to come back. So 
as well as to invest and to give technical assistance. And we're providing the policy space for them to be able to do that. And we've had several other engagements as well. So our commitment to the diaspora is very, um, it's meaningful, it's sincere, and we're going to be able to incorporate um, the diaspora into our development objectives. And I think that, I think that with the kind of political stability we have and trust that we have in the government in terms of our predictability, in terms of our rule of law, accountability, transparency, I think the possibilities are endless. And I think that we, we have to be able to commend the people of Ghana uh, for being patient and, and for trusting in us um, that we we're able to, to lead uh, and to give and to give direction. And our, our, our primary aim is really to improve the lives and the livelihoods of Guyanese. And that is what we've been elected to do. And I know that on the leadership of, of President Ali, um, that is the only thing that we're working on. And with all of the ministries, which includes the ministry that I'm responsible for, that is our core objective. So everything that we do is focused on uplifting and transforming lives, beginning with the most vulnerable. Thank you very much, Minister. And also, um, I want to thank you for being on the program today. We look forward to another interview with you so that we can discuss more areas. And thank you to the listeners and view viewers. This has been Progress Report. I'm Stacey Carmichael, and today we were joined by Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Honorable Utah. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you again. Goodbye for now.